What's up guys? I'm doing things a little bit differently today. There's been a ton of discussion recently in the past week or two about the Gigabyte power supply situation. And I was asked the question, what should Gigabyte have done about that issue? I answered that question as part of one of my monthly Q&A videos. That video ended up being really, really long. So today I'm just going to be focusing on that one single question. When a company like Gigabyte has a product out on the market that they know is prone to failure and could cause damage to somebody's system or other components, or in a worst case scenario, like a house fire or something like that, how should they go about handling that? I'm gonna focus on that today and then I'll have another video with some more Q&A as well as a big old unboxing later this week. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. This was a reply to a Q&A request I did on Twitter, by the way, you can follow me there at Paul Hardware. Uh, I often take questions either from Twitter or from the comment section of the last Q&A video. So if you're not aware, there's been a lot of discussion in the past week or two about Gigabyte, their power supplies. I covered this on uh, Tech News that was on Sunday. Gamers Nexus has really been the driving force around uh, revealing a lot of the issues with these power supplies, getting a bunch of them in and tested. And they're failing, basically, as you can kind of see here. The model numbers on those power supplies are GPP7 50 GM and GPP850 GM, and uh, it's pretty well established at this point that they're not good units. And when used to provide uh, a wattage within their specification, they can fail, sometimes horribly so, and they can sometimes take components along with it as well. Sal's question is less about the failures themselves, though, and more so about the response. Gigabyte's uh, reply to these incidents. NZXT is also brought up. They had to recall their H1 case after another extended series of revealing videos posted by Gamers Nexus, as well as some other outlets. And in Sunday's tech news video, I indicated to Gigabyte and also Newegg, who has been pairing these bad power supplies with high wattage draw GPUs like RTX 3090s and their Newegg Shuffle in order to sort of pawn them off on unsuspecting would-be GPU buyers who are excited to win a GPU in the Newegg Shuffle and then they have to buy this crappy power supply along with it. And if they unknowingly connected those two devices together, there's a decent chance that one might kill the other. I told them that they're going the wrong way because Gigabyte's response was really unfortunate and I would say not very well thought out. In particular, they were calling into question the Gamers Nexus testing methodology. They were using a load testing device that can actually sets like a certain wattage load on a power supply and then run it at a certain amount of time. But the power supplies were still failing within a couple minutes and what Gamers Nexus was doing was not outside the realm of possibility, even though they were using a load testing device rather than simply, simply plugging the unit into a computer. More to the point though, my first advice for a company like Gigabyte would be don't sell power supplies that explode. And I know that's pretty straightforward advice, but uh, there's a lot of work that goes into the development of a product. And because most companies' goals are to make money, there's often a lot of uh, design choices that go into the components that go inside a power supply as well. There are more expensive components, there are less expensive components, and each component is gonna be rated to operate within a certain specification, a certain set of design parameters. By using less expensive components that sort of ride that edge of just barely meeting the parameters for the design specs, you are introducing the possibility for more, more failures, especially in the case of something like a power supply, because they have to deal with a lot of issues, whether that might be quote unquote dirty power coming from the wall with voltage drops and a really high amount of ripple, or if you're dealing with big power draw spikes from the PC, like what happens when you initially power it on for the first time. So doing better in the design phase when they're first making those crucial decisions about the internal components in a power supply is step one. And for a company like Gigabyte, who probably isn't actually actually manufacturing the power supply, they're working with an OEM, they will work with that OEM to make those decisions. And the OEM will say, well, you could use different capacitors or other components here, but that would increase the bill of materials cost by a certain amount, and that might cut into Gigabyte's potential profits uh, in their ability to sell that device on the market. The decisions made at that point should be more balanced between providing a long-term functional product versus simply going with the cheapest option available. But beyond that, let's say a company has done their due diligence and they've released a product that, to the best of their knowledge, is a good product. But then suddenly there's thousands or tens of thousands of them out on the market being used in ways that uh, Gigabyte or 
whatever OEM wasn't necessarily able to test for. I think we can sometimes give companies the benefit of the doubt and realize that yes, there are circumstances that just can't really be accounted for in the design phase that do come to light once a product has reached the open market. And one of the first things Gigabyte could have done is listen to Eris. Uh, he is a reviewer at Hardware Busters and you might note this video he posted is from November of 2020, which is which was quite a while ago. He did a very in-depth test on this power supply and he determined what well, something that Gamers Nexus would also confirm many, many months later. Uh, these power supplies are prone to exploding. And this is where there is a lot of legitimate, justified criticism towards Gigabyte. This was brought to their attention a very long time ago, and it seems like they just didn't really do anything about it. And as more negative reviews poured in on these power supplies from people who were having issues with them, they became more and more difficult to sell. Then they went so far as to team up with Newegg in whatever way they did and started to pair these power supplies with graphics cards in the Newegg shuffle, which again is just a very transparent method of jettisoning these power supplies, which they were probably having difficulty selling otherwise, to unsuspecting customers who, chances are, might be building new system and might say like, oh, 850 watt power supply seems decent. I needed one of those anyway. Let's go ahead and use it with the RTX 3090 that it was paired in the shuffle with that I just bought. There's a scene in Fight Club that you might be familiar with where Ed Norton's character is talking about his job as an insurance claims adjuster. And he's talking about a large company, an automobile manufacturer in this case, and how they go about deciding whether or not to do a recall. Now in Fight Club, it's a little bit more of a stark comparison because they're talking about people's lives, but the company would look at the design flaw in the vehicle or product that they had launched, its potential for failure, and how much each individual fa failure would cost them as a company. They would weigh that against the cost of just issuing a recall in order to bring the defective units back in so that people wouldn't be injured or otherwise harmed by them. And if this costs more than just handling it individually, well, they won't do the recall and then people might be left to suffer on their own. Again, it's a bit more of a stark contrast because they're talking about automobiles and people's lives and people dying versus graphics cards dying. However, Gigabyte should not be looking at this in that light because that doesn't reflect well on them as a company. They might be looking at it and saying, well, look at the percentage of GPUs that might actually draw 750 watts or close to 850 watts of power. There's not that many people using those. Therefore, even though the power supply units themselves are prone to failure and they know it, they don't think as many people will experience that failure because they're not gonna be drawing that amount of wattage. Therefore, they'd rather call Gamers Nexus methodology into question and issue their sort of halfway soft recall by saying like, oh, people who want a replacement can get one. Therefore, they are not going to proactively contact every customer who has been sold one of these power supplies, which means there's gonna be people who have these power supplies who don't necessarily follow uh, the tech YouTubes on a regular basis, who simply aren't aware of the possibility for failure and that their system, which was working fine for a month or two, suddenly might have sparks and fail and kill their graphics card because they fired up a game that uses a little bit more power than what they've previously tried to use. This is what Gigabyte needs to do here if they want to save face and sort of at least try to turn this situation around a little bit. They need to contact the customers who were sold power supplies by issuing a full recall because there's a decent number of those customers who are completely unaware of the Gamers Nexus video or their potential for failure in their systems. This is like basic public relations when you're dealing with a problem like this and it's really something that I feel like a lot of companies have attempted to skirt. They'll go as far as they possibly can before accepting responsibility for the crappy products that they've pushed out. Even NZXT took so long to replace the riser cables that came in the H1 cases, and it took a lot of public pressure to finally get them to issue a recall across the board for all of those cases. And I guess that's what it boils down to for me. I don't blame a company for trying to make money, and I don't blame a company for trying to cut costs to a reasonable extent. However, when an incident like this arises, we need to see that company drop all pretense of making money or saving face and do what's right by the customer. That's a pretty simple ask. Do what's right by the customer, but you often see companies go the other way as long as they possibly can, and it's up to the pressure of the community to let them know that that's not right, and it will have a lasting impact on the reputation of that company if they keep acting in that way. If you enjoyed this video, though, if you enjoy watching my videos, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and uh, you can hit the bell and all that good stuff as well. Also, leave me a comment down in the comment section below. I will be checking those as I look for questions to answer in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.